All right guys, so here we are back at Knox Mine Disaster location. As you can see, we've already got the activity started. Flashlight has been going off pretty crazy ever since it was placed down. Now for this one, we actually have a few special guests. Um, JP Videos is here with me again as always, um, but there are other people who you will find throughout the video. Um, we did not want to come here alone, but with more people to be a little bit safer. Fortunately, there's a dog barking from one of the houses on the hill. Hopefully that stops after a while, but just kind of bear with that. Now, as you guys can see right there is another infrared camera that is set up to cover this whole area. And then we have another infrared camera placed right there to cover the following area here. With the doll, we have the Canon G21, which does not have infrared. So basically everything is gonna be dark except for when the flashlight goes on, that's when it will illuminate. So that'll make for some awesome footage outside the night vision. There we go, lights back on. Uh, nothing popping up on the thermal at all for it. No, nothing yet. You get like, like a little bit of blue like that around it. But. Now we did see the lights been turning on and off. We do know someone or something is here with us. Thank you for turning it on. If you'd like to try to communicate with you, you could use the flashlight or the K2 meter, that little green light. All you have to do is make it light up yellow and we will know that you are here with us and communicating with us as we ask you a few questions. If you can understand this, can you please turn the light off? You need to turn it all the way off. Could just be getting used to it too and seeing what it's doing. If you try to touch up, touch the other device with the green light, it will light up, it won't hurt you, but it will allow us to communicate with you. Can you give us a sign that shows you remember us being here? I'm sure it must have been you that we spoke to last time when we had the doll sitting here and you were curiously looking at it as well. We also do have a list of names of the men that perished here. We will try to reach out to them individually a little, a little bit later. If you remember, it was in these woods right here okay, so behind us where we had the horrific event of the loud thump that took place. So we, we did an investigation and actually lights back on. Out of here. It was light again. And we did an investigation and we actually ended up being spooked out of here because we heard a loud thumping sound behind us. That was unexplainable. The doll just tipped over. What? The doll just tipped over. The light came on and the doll tipped over. <laughs> That's never happened. No. All right. Give me a moment here, we'll pick up. Um, we just had some activity here. We're gonna to try to see what's going on. That is the first time. And that was set good. That that shouldn't have moved. Oh, I can't wait to watch that on the playback. And so just to show you, that's a Jesse doll. We had it propped up fairly well. It's a pretty heavy doll against the stake there. And it got pushed over to the point that the hat kind of moved away a couple inches. There is a residential neighborhood. Uh, yeah. I see lights. Is okay. that light shining towards us? There's people. We got people coming up here. We got people coming. You want to come back up here? On our way. Just there, we got people coming. Hang on here. Hold your position, I think they're just moving on. Come again? 
Hold your position. Alright, we have two individuals walking down the trail the direction we were headed. Right, I believe it's the individual we saw earlier and someone else. They're playing music, so you may hear them down there. But they okay, acknowledged us, but they kept moving on. So things should be, should be okay for the moment. The Okay, there actually is another way down to it. Uh, if we follow the rails a little bit further down, we can cut down from above. I can see it that way. So we can do so. We can do that. That's a good idea. Let's go with that plan. Luckily, it seems like the dog has stopped barking. Yeah. Thank God. Yeah, so right. this is, um, I'm going to show you, that's a big mountainside there. Up on top of there, a few hundred feet is where some homes are, but nowhere near us. But the dog is barking further down away, but I think they brought them in and stopped barking now. We've got a clear night though, a little bit of a breeze, not enough to, there it goes again. Whoa. That was pushed over hard. That actually made a really big noise. Doll went over a second time. Wow. That is the first time I've had responses from the doll. Yeah. I wonder if it doesn't want it there. Hey, there was, that's colder. That doll is colder than the ground around it. 25 degrees. So it's significant. It's a, at least three, four degrees difference. There's the light again. Huh? The light's on again. Ah. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. It is. The ground's 1.3. That's 0.6. Guys, just to let you know, we are getting some activity up here. The Jesse doll was tipped over twice now. Wow. Light, light is still on. Well, if you don't like her and you don't want her being here, I'm sorry, but... You're gonna to have to move her a little bit further or harder away from this spot because if you keep tipping her over, I'm just gonna keep setting her right back up. So. Something definitely is present here. That doll tipped over twice within the last five minutes. That second time is really forceful. And you know, the one thing that I will note out, that pole, even with the flags moving, is not moving. Yeah, I know that too. Yeah. So if I stand by a fucking chair, you can see my feet sitting chair. Yeah. Behind the doll. I'm gonna get a piece of that. Yeah. So if I move this way down to the corner, at two points. Here's the light again. Guys, as you can see, no one is around it. That is turning on and off all on its own. If you don't want the light there, you don't want the doll there, just push it over. Make the light go off, push the doll, light the K2 light up, whatever you want to do. If you let us know that you don't want it there, we will remove it for you. Okay, last time I checked, you had a lot more to give up last time. So if knocking over a doll and turning on a flashlight is all you're going to dish out, then you might want to step that up a little bit. All right, guys. So pretty eventful so far. Uh, definitely a little bit scary knowing that somebody else is walking around back here, which again shows that we know for a fact nobody came back here the first time because it was way obvious that someone came back here this time. You could hear them. They were making noise and you could see them it you know so definitely rolls out any theories we had the last time now the flashlight's actually on again as we're talking which is very active now you guys remember in the prior video the flashlight did kick on several times we never had a k2 response on it but tonight we did have one blip on the k2 meter and it actually happened to be when those guys are walking across and we weren't paying attention but i did see it blip once um 
and this whole situation with the doll being knocked over, I don't know how I feel about that. Um, that's definitely the first time we've ever had action happen to the doll. Um, there's, there's never actually been a response directed towards her, so... And as you guys have been able to see, it's been windy, and the wind is not tipping the doll over, so something else is. It's just a matter of finding out what it is, and honestly, I'm in more of a, I want to intimidate kind of mood, because I really want whatever this was that was here last time that scared us, I really want it to come back again, and I really want it to bring something a lot more stronger than it did last time, because it's really going to take a lot more than turning on a light and knocking over a doll to get us running out of here today. Interesting. What you got? I'm going blue to red up here. What? Watch this. I'm going to turn about 10 degrees and it goes blue. I bring it back this way and it was going back. There we go. We're getting red again. Mm -hmm. I'll get you out now. Yeah. So what was happening this morning? I mean, you have it pointed at those trees and they should be pretty cold. Yeah, and all of a sudden there was right there. Yeah. I'm not sure where that heat signature is coming from. No idea. But right back in here is also where that thud had happened. Oh, was that the spot? Yeah, and I'm trying to slowly pan. There it goes, yeah. Look at that, it's coming back again. What the? That's, there should not be anything. What is doing that? No, there shouldn't be any heat signature there. Uh, it, it keeps moving too. Come on. That's what Alan was talking about the last time they were here. It was just JP and Alan. And over here in the woods, they heard, and we could hear it on the live stream, uh, it was a big, like, thud, like something actually fell. Um, and now we're seeing some kind of heat signature where there really shouldn't be. Yeah. And it's, and it's moving around, too. Because, I mean, it's about 20, or about 30-some degrees outside. And that's really red. Yeah. Is the temperature changing? Yeah. That's so weird. Walk straight out. Okay, so I can see you. Turn my light off. Start walking back. Now that's crazy. Look, watch. Put your hand out. You have to be like right there. Yeah, because like even that. when you were walking. This is unbelievable. There should not be heat like this out here. I'm 
soon as you turn the spirit box on, the light has already came back on. Oh, good Jay. Yeah. Is there anyone here with us tonight that would like to communicate? I am scanning in reverse too, so anything that comes through shouldn't be normal frequency. Functioning correctly. I don't scan anymore. I've never done this before. I won't scan anymore. All right, guys. Uh, a little intermission here. We're going to see what's going on. The spirit box is not functioning properly. It won't even scan anymore. So I'm going to try to get this working. If not, we're going to have to come up with the plan B. So strange. Never done that before. <clears throat> They're only able to manually scan it, and that's not going to work. Of <clears throat> all times. If you're here with us, can you make that flashlight turn on all the way? It is very similar to a torch or a miner's lantern. If you're not familiar with a flashlight, it will light up. All you have to do is try to pick it up. There we go. Awesome. Spirit box is working. All right, we're back. We got the spirit box working again. We're gonna ask some questions. Try your best to listen for some responses. Is there anyone here with us right now? Can you tell me your name? Sound like Luke. Got those names, Alan? Yeah. We do have the names of the 12 miners who perished. We're gonna read them off. Okay. And I don't even know how to pronounce these. Let me read them? Yeah. Is there a Samuel Altieri? John Beloga? Sound like it. Yeah. Hey. Benjamin Boyar. If you hear your name, please shout out. Francis Burns. Charles Featherman. Joseph Gazinski. Dominic Kowaleski. Frank Orlowski. Eugene Ostrowski. William Sinclair. Good phone it out. It's two more names. Daniel Stefanides. Like no one said that name. Daniel. So I said Daniel and the light came on. One more name is Herman Zalonis. Yeah. If any of you are here, if we pronounce your name, we'd like to communicate with you. You could do so by turning on the flashlight or the K2 meter, which is the little green light. It will not harm you. It will only allow you to communicate with us. Are you aware that you're no longer alive? That light's like fading on and off. Do you like us coming back to visit you?
Are you happy that we're here? Is someone trapping you here? Are we in danger of being here? Is there somebody here watching us who is afraid to communicate? Let's turn yellow. It's not. Did you hear that? Yeah. It's not. It's not. We both heard it's not. If this is not Daniel, who is this? Uh, Could you please give us your name? Size of a person. Yeah, it's like the head. It's right there. Like someone standing right there. Could you please identify yourself? Yeah, Are you a loved one shape. to one of the deceased? I can't believe how good that thing is going. What the hell is the grid up there? You could really get any mess with that. Yeah, yeah. Do the green lights scare you? I can't. You have the light coming on again. That was like almost an instant response. Yeah. The green lights will not harm you. If you want us to turn the green lights off, turn the flashlight off. Turn the light off if you want us to turn the green light off. You gotta walk away from it for it to work. That's a tough part because like last time we were getting instant hits, instant responses. This time it's like. Uh, please ask me, can you turn the heat signature device on the right? Lights back on bright. Maybe just hold that in. <clears throat> Do you want us to keep the green lights on? If you want us to keep it on, turn the light out. Light went out. Light's back on. Yeah. 
after you knock the Jesse doll over again. Can you knock the Jesse doll over again? Still in that area. So Matt's over there right now with the K2 meter and he's getting some blips on, this, on the meter. Which is weird because last time we were here we weren't getting any hits. Yeah, he was dead. And it's like a height of, of a regular person. About six foot, yeah. yeah. Are you a survivor of the mine disaster? If so, could you please turn the yellow light on in the K2 meter in Matt's hand? You know what, while you guys are doing this, I'm going to go to the here and see if that Pizza the answer is still there. It's only that one spot. Are you one of the supervisors of this mine? Are you getting a feeling from anything over here? Yeah. So am I. I keep feeling like there's some, some something over here. So, RJ and I both have a weird feeling, actually at the same time, about, about something over here, behind this camera. Ever since I heard that noise, I just keep Do you have any guilt feeling like there's something as a result of this disaster? Did you hear that? Look, pay attention. Right in this area, there was two green light flashes, meaning that something walked. Well, I just moved too. It wasn't me, was it? No, because it blocked it up there, so something moved ahead of us. I just saw it up there on the hill. Okay, so it is currently starting to snow. Camera equipment should be fine for now, but just snow is not like rain, so we should be okay. Not have anything to worry about. Whoa, I saw that. Wow. I switched at the Fahrenheit. Okay. Is that doing any better? It was, okay, now I got the Fahrenheit, so we should be able to see. So I'll scan my hand to show the difference here. See, it's heating up. It's it's very faint here and there. I can't track it. It keeps moving on me. Yeah. But it's crazy because there is something throwing off heat back here. Yeah. And there's absolutely nothing that should be. And it's... There was a colliery back here, but everything has been demolished. There's only a coal processing plant, excuse me, the remnants of a building that is about a mile away from here. It's the only remaining structure. Let's see if I can... Yeah, you like using that little guy, huh? It's pretty neat. Yeah, it's good because you get instant response. Well, one thing, yeah, one thing I... Oh, oh. Yeah, and that was holding it pretty far. It was doing this when I was standing there. I wasn't moving. 
and it flashed all the way to the red. Didn't have it near my phone, nothing. Okay, that's uh, going to red. Now move it closer to my phone. The, the phone should make it go all the way off. Yeah. Yeah, see, real close, yeah. it goes red. So you're far enough away where it shouldn't interfere it. Yeah, and like my phone's in my pocket, so. But I'm going to go into the, uh, the woods here. and. want to take a light with you? Or? Yeah, I should be. If you keep it. Okay, yeah. It's right here. Put their links down. Yep, it's still right there. Okay, I went back in there and nothing, but it's right this... Put clearing. it down towards the ground. And it just disappears. So, that was a little bit... You know, we're thinking that maybe it's a person. Over by the memorial, I held it up closer to my head so someone who's like six foot, six two, but right here, this is a shorter, mm -hmm. possibly shorter individual. Yeah, that's right. Because if I go... Higher, it's gone. Ooh, whoa. that was a bright hit. No, maybe that other one's back. If I go. Yeah, that's not my phone doing it. Because it'd be steady nonstop. Yeah, so we're getting right now some pretty good K2 hits. Matt is holding it. He's about four feet away from my phone, which is far enough away that my phone is not triggering it. Yeah, because I have my phone in my pocket, so if I bring it down, yeah, it'll set. That's my phone right. setting it off. So if I move, you, you have to be within a foot of it. Yeah. Yeah. So something is around us that is, you know, the size of a regular individual, around five, six foot tall, varying in height. Could be more than one person, but there's no electricity here. None of our equipment is setting it off. Ooh. Wow. Oh, that's solid. That's solid. Whoa. Holy crap. Whoa, whoa, what, what? That hit red Yep. a few times. It did it over there too. Wow, look at that. And oh I'm not God. moving my arm, I'm keeping it my arm's length. Uh, guys. And that was right where you guys... Yeah, this is where we heard the sound. Yeah, I forgot to mention that. This is the sound we, area where we heard that thump. Adam, look at it going crazy. See this. K2's lighting up red. Are you feeling anything around your hand or anything? Uh, it, it's hard to differentiate if it's like just the breeze that's coming through. Right. Is there someone here with us? If there is, make that stay yellow. Is there more than 10 people here with you? That's a pretty solid answer. Do you enjoy having us here? Do you miss your family? Did you hear? I don't know what that was. Do you want us to leave? If you're mad that we're here, light it back red again. We come here peacefully and with respect. We're just trying to communicate with you. Jeez. Wow. For as many investigations that me and Alan did, we never got red hits like that. Are you angry with the coal mine owners for making you lose your life? Are you at peace right now? Nothing, no, not at peace. Is there something we can do to make you at peace? That almost went red. Yeah. Can you try to tell us how we can help you? Do you see a white light at all? If there's a white light, you can try to go towards it. You may find peace there. We're getting some pretty significant hits here. 
That's pretty. Yo, I'm gonna switch places with you. I'm gonna put the camera down and hold it and see. If okay. I want you to ask some questions and we'll see. Oh, yeah, that was all. It's red. Almost red. Do you enjoy our company? All right, you need to make it go back to green so we can ask you a new question. Thank you. I'm a child. Any questions from anyone? You're welcome to ask. Well, there. Even comments that you could tell them to ask. Jay, what, move it down or down, either down or up a little bit. Any see. Are there any children present? It's just that one zone. Yeah. Tell the goose to make sounds. <laughs> were you responsible for making that thumping sound last time Alan and myself were here? Ask if they know where their remains are. Do you know where your body is? You might be lost. Mm. Do you know who was responsible for making that sound? But they're stuck here. Wait, when I dead? Are you stuck here? That's strange. Barb says yes, they're still here. It's like something scared it away. Are you still here with us? Make it go yellow, okay. Thank you. they want to be set free and go back home. Do you wish you could be set free to go back home? I don't know, it's like I like to you, Matt. <laughs> it's not yeah, really responding with me. <laughs> Mr. Popular. <laughs> Yeah, something like standing right here by me. Yeah, and it's where this little outcropping of like how the trees are on the ground. Because I know, Al, when you came over here, you said you felt a little like cold or yeah, uneasiness. Ask if they're sad. Are you sad? Yes. Ask if they need to go help to go home. I don't know if my eyes are playing tricks with me. I saw something black move over there near the edge of the tree line. <coughs> something low to the ground too. And it didn't make any sound. I it. I was down. Is there something else here with us? Are we in danger by being here? It's a pretty solid yes. <laughs> Do you have a message? Ready to go, Matt. <laughs> Gotta ruin it for everybody. <laughs> Do you have a message for someone? If you have a message you'd like to pass along, you could speak or yell. Our microphones may be able to pick it up. And we might be able to hear you. Try your best to shout, make a noise, break a stick, do anything you can to make some sound or a noise so that we know you're here and that you're trying to communicate. It's like going crazy now. No one here sneezed, no. Is there an evil spirit here with us? I was waiting for you to ask that. And that went right That's back. That's your answer. Is the spirit... Did the spirit make the noise that scared us last time? It seems Do like a yes. concept of how much time you've been here? Can you go back to green, please? Please move away from it. Let the lights go green. 
Uh oh. Uh -oh. Please step away. Is there something coming after us here and you're trying to protect us? Are we safe here with you? I think it's like shrugging our shoulders. I don't know. <laughs> Should we leave this area? Should we investigate down by the river? We need yellow for a yes. A little bit. Yeah. More like a maybe. Should we go by the hopper car? That seems like a pretty... I don't know if I'm seeing stuff or what. Is there a dark figure lurking around us? <laughs> You're asking the questions that we don't want the answers to. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Alright, we're going to continue on with our investigation. We want to thank you for communicating with us. If you wish to follow us, you're welcome to. Otherwise, we're going to move on to a different area. But thank you once again for passing your me messages along. We got a steep embankment here, so we have to be cautious. The video never does justice to how steep something is. Are you guys enjoying the paranormal stream tonight? I think it's a pretty good way to spend a Friday night, huh? Really strong sulfur smell. Pot right there. Yeah, We're not out of them. Alex. Not too bad. Thank God. The springs that are bubbling up, and it's not spring water. I'll tell you that. Found like three of them over over that way. Just watch your footing. Let's see the dark color, orange, or orange. Coming up from the mines on the ground. It's not bubbling up like it was so much last time. For you guys, I'm actually gonna turn off the night vision real quick. Yeah, everyone's okay. We are uh, almost. So that way, up. I can actually let you guys see unlike last time um, but yeah that is how orange the water and the rocks are and you can see all the foam right in there everything is just completely stained that's all orange doing a video in the springtime on Passing Mine Drainage uh, showing the source of it is actually a large borehole in Lackawanna County that is partially responsible for some of this but a lot of it is coming out in multiple areas but I'm going to provide some detailed history on it and some drone footage from this area showing yeah, how the quite a nice stuff stick on you. What's that? You had a big stick stuck to you. Oh. <laughs> How's that light working for you? Really well. Yeah. I like the fog light. Gives that yeah. good nice spectrum spread. of light. Yeah. This water level is much higher. And the rail car is down there. Um, we're going to take a different way. I don't feel like I did last time, but I don't feel like the first time we came down. It's yeah. kind of in between. It doesn't feel as calm, but it doesn't feel like as unwanted either. It's kind of right in the middle. Like I feel a little bit on edge, but that might just be myself. Yeah. But the water level is higher because. And it's kind of it's hard to say, but there was streams bubbling out. I already think you can see part of it. Yeah. You can see the discoloration. Yeah, there right still, there. Yeah, right there. 
You think that's too hard to walk along? Well, they're saying it's muddy and slippery. I, I don't know. I mean, once we get past there, it, it opens up. That's a difficult part right there, though. Light here. Oh yeah, slip there. Oh wow, he needs one of those shirts like Mike had. <laughs> what was that? You need one of those shirts like Mike has. Oh yeah, I know. <laughs> I'd have bigger cleavage. Oh, that freaking dog again. Got up a lot easier. Up like a monkey. <laughs> Got there a lot quicker than I thought. <laughs> what happened to your hundred pounds? <laughs> 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 You're bringing a souvenir object. Yeah. <laughs> talk, talk, Harry. Big stick. Grab this camera. That's, That's the problem. It's camera. so slick. <sighs> Graceful. Thank you. Uh huh. Whew. All right, guys, quick update. Uh, we got everything gathered up here. We're going to leave Alan's equipment rolling here. The Jesse doll is going to stay there. My flashlight that's constantly flickering is going to stay there. We're going to walk a little bit further down the tracks and go down the embankment to check out the hopper car. Yeah, I left everything. Alright guys, so right now we're heading down towards the one coal car, which we did not get to see last time, but we're going to investigate and explore this time. Now this will be my first time actually seeing it, so I'm not quite sure what to expect, along with what kind of paranormal activity we may encounter. Good now. Wow. 
check that out. So this is literally one of the cars used to try to plug up the hole here. off the rails right into the river and they were swirling around in a hundred foot wide uh, whirlpool trying to plug up the hole which caused more harm than good because it actually made the hole wider. Yes, yeah, so I can probably see that like as the cars went down they just ripped open that hole as they spun around mm -hmm. and spun around. Exactly. <laughs> but again I was telling RJ there's no protocol for a disaster like this so they didn't know what to do they were yeah. just thinking on their feet. And they dumped telephone poles in there, railroad ties. They, even they were literally hated. throwing everything at it. Anything they could find. Two days worth, non-stop dumping material into the hole until they finally broke through the surface. For the crazy part, have to make our way back over. Hope my cameras are still there. Hope nothing crazy happened because definitely walked away out of uh, sight. So anything could have happened paranormal or a person. So I see the, the flashlight's on over there. The flashlight's on. Is it? Yeah. All right, so I do see the flashlight on currently. So I guess we'll find out what's going on when we get there. So hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. Um, I'm definitely going to use this setup again where I put cameras more or less to cover an entire area. I think it's something that's successful and I think it's going to do very well, especially when I go back and look at the footage. And I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Hey, what's going on? I'm Mike from Out Naturing. Um, this is my first time here out at the uh, Knox Disaster uh, site. And um, yeah, I had a great time out here. Um, yeah everything was it was it's all new to me so i mean i really can't put it into words um yeah i mean i'll have it all together in my video so just watch that i'll give you all my thoughts and how i feel about it 
is still in shock right now. <laughs> never coming again. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was definitely fun. Well, hey guys, my name is Matt, Matt MPG. Uh, this is my first time coming out to this uh, for a paranormal investigation. Uh, it was definitely worth, uh, I got a hotel room for the night to stay up here because I knew we were going to be going late, but uh, it was definitely a cool experience. I'm a bit of a skeptic when it comes to this kind of stuff, so seeing the K2 meters going off and the flashlight, I thought that was pretty neat. Um, but yeah, I'll definitely do this again and couldn't ask for uh, you know a better group of guys to uh, hang out with and uh, experience all this stuff. So thank you guys. Hey everybody, Adam Taruska, Adam Taruska Videos. This also was my first time here at the Knox Mine Disaster and I had an absolute blast. Um, it was just, I had a great time. I can't wait to do it again and can't wait to return here again. It's definitely something to check out. Check out all our videos, you'll like it. Pretty much what they all said. <laughs> RJR. So being our second time here, we knew what we were up against with a mysterious sound that spooked us the first time. And coming back, I had some anticipation. I wasn't sure what was gonna happen. Things went pleasantly good. You know, we had a lot more activity. Nothing that scared us this time. We couldn't replicate the sound, but we had his doll moving, the Jesse doll tipping over twice. Um, the flashlight turning on and off dozens of times and in an incredible K2 session where especially with Matt holding it we had some red hits which has never happened before during our investigation. So all in all I think this was a home run. It was a great idea for us to come back and more importantly we did it safety in numbers all of us here together. We broke up in teams. We had protection. We had walkie talkies. We did things safely and smart and um, I had a great time. Can't wait to do it again. Yep. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. The apocalypse.